today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to talk you through this whole painting with no music and we'll go through the process. I'm using a 10 by 20 canvas. Here's the brushes I'm using. And I'm using $5 worth of Apple Barrel craft paint. So I'm using a straight edge to get the horizon line. After that, I'll move down and draw a small line to represent where the ocean stops. Uh, then I'll add a few lines to represent sand dunes and just throw in roughly where I'm going to put the fence line. Uh, while I'm doing that, I'm showing you what paint I'm mixing. I'm using some white, some deep navy, and the bright blue. I'm going to mix these together, just a dab of the, the deep navy with the white, and I'm going to get that lighter blue. I can soften that a little bit with that bright blue, and then I'll start applying that to the canvas. Now this is just the first layer of the sky. Um, I want to work fast and keep it wet because I'm going to layer over this as we go. Now I'm going to add some of the purple. Uh, adding purple to this still wet canvas, I'm pushing that sky back, uh, just muting that blue down. Um, my light source is going to come from the left, so now I'm going to start to add some white. Uh, and that white is going to be more predominant on the left side of the canvas. And I'll add some of that uh, navy blue to the right side of the canvas just to darken that side a bit. I wanted to mention, like I said at the beginning, that I'm only using $5 worth of uh, Walmart craft paint. Um, they're 50 cents a bottle, pretty cheap. Uh, the canvases are from Michaels. Uh, it was $13, so that comes out to about $2.20 a piece for the canvas. So we're under $10 for the entire painting. Uh, it doesn't have to be expensive to do this craft. While I was carrying on there, I did uh, hit the canvas with a hairdryer real quick just to dry it out. Um, I'm mixing some more purple. I would like to tone down that blue a little bit more, especially on the left side of the canvas. Now that the canvas is dry, you can see that paint just doesn't really blend in very well at all. Uh, the way you fix this is just a small mister bottle or just wet your brush and just wet down the paint some. And uh, it spreads out quite a bit better once you add just a little bit of water to it. Now that that's done, I'm going to hit it with a hair dryer one more time. And this time I'm going to dry it out really well. Because in this next step now, we're going to put some painter's tape on there to get a good straight horizon line. You don't want to press too hard when you put this painter's tape on because you really don't want to peel off any of the paint from the sky when you pull it off. I'm now adding some teal, pale yellow, and burnt umber to the palette. You can darken the deep navy with some of the burnt umber to give that darker tone blue and that's going to be the water furthest away from us at the horizon. As you work forward, move into just the teal and bring that toward you. After that, start adding some of the pale yellow to the teal to create that green glow in the water that we all love. Don't be worried if you mess this step up or any step in this. Uh, the great thing about acrylic is it dries so fast that you can just paint right over whatever you feel like you messed up. So uh, acrylic is pretty forgiving in that respect. So uh, don't worry if you feel like you've uh, ruined it uh, because you haven't. It's always easily fixable. Now I'm still adding more of the yellow uh, to create that greenish glow I'm looking for. And uh, always keeping in mind that for this painting, I'm keeping the light source on the left hand side. So I'm making that a little brighter than the rest. After that, I went back to the darker blue and I've added some uh, lines, uh, wavy lines, horizontally to give it that, well, wave effect. So you have some of the darker and lighter contrast in the water. Then it's time to finally pull the tape off and reveal that nice straight horizon line. I'm going to grab some of the white now. Uh, but I have a, a, just a touch of blue on this brush still. I don't want a stark white bright yet uh, to these waves. I'm just going to add the white caps. 
uh, as I go I'm gonna draw the lines slightly closer together at the horizon and much smaller and then they're gonna get larger and space slightly farther apart as you come towards you on the canvas a small flat brush works great for this process while I wait for that to dry I'm gonna start to mix up the color of the distant island um, to keep that island distant, you really want uh, a smoky gray faded color. So some of the brown and the navy create that grayish color. Uh, add a little bit of purple to really tone it down. And then white to change the value of that hue. Now I'm going to add uh, that I've had no formal uh, art training or schooling. Um, I just kind of picked this up about a year and a half ago. I really do enjoy painting and uh, it's fun to post these videos too. Um, I hope that you are inspired and maybe even want to try this painting, but uh, please don't judge me on some of my uh, terminology. Uh, I'm still learning and uh, I'd like to grow and uh, help you grow too. So thanks for watching and uh, let's keep going. So while I talk there, I did add some uh, highlights and some shadows to the island. They're very subtle. Uh, but since that island is distant, you want them to be. Uh, I kept my brush kind of dirty after that, added just a shade of white to it, and now I'm going to break that uh, sharp horizon line because it is in the distance and we don't want it quite so crisp. So with that done, it's finally time to move on to the clouds. Uh, mixing up just some more of a, a mix of the blue uh, along with some of the purple and creating just a subtle very dark shade change in the value of this color for the base of the clouds. As you get that base of the cloud line done, uh, start adding just slightly lighter colors. You can add some purple or whatever you feel like the cloud should look like, uh, but just change the shade to lighter as you get higher. Uh, I added a little bit of yellow there which is kind of dangerous when you're dealing with blue. You don't want to turn your clouds green. That would not really work. Um, it is a little bit green. I'm going to fix that shortly. Uh, but uh, like I said with acrylic you can fix all this stuff. It dries so quick it's easy to go over it. Uh, I'm using that small filbert brush, uh, keeping in mind that the light is coming from the left hand side, so the brightest parts of the clouds are going to be on the left, uh, and then just dabbing in that tone. Uh, now I've mixed a little bit of the purple in, and I'm trying to cover up that uh, green I unintentionally created in the clouds. Uh, with that done, uh, the white has already kind of dried quite a bit already. I put a little more paint on the brush and I keep working uh, that left hand side of the cloud to give that highlight to it to give it the appearance that there's big tufts in the clouds. After that I felt like uh, the bottom of the clouds were a little still uh, too sharp a line even though it doesn't appear like it but I wanted to soften that so I mixed a little bit of that purplish color just to give it a, a more of a haze and create more depth in the painting. I grabbed my dagger brush after that and started to create sailboats. Uh, this part's kind of fun. Uh, it really starts to make the painting feel like you know, you're getting somewhere. Uh, if you don't have a dagger brush, you don't have to. Uh, I put these in here with this uh, because I like this brush and I have it, but uh, I'm going to only put a couple boats in and then I'll switch over to a rigger brush or you could use a liner brush, which is just a fine bristled small brush uh, for some detail. Uh, you could use that to paint these in as I'm demonstrating here. I'd like to mention for this part that I'm not using uh, straight white. There is a little bit of blue to this. You don't want to use your bright white right off the get-go. That's kind of like your last highlight, your brightest brights. Uh, we want these sailboats to be back into the distance, so the further ones maybe have slightly more blue and the closer ones a little bit more white, but I'm still using shades of blue. Uh, you could put as many of these boats in here as you want. Uh, I went with, I think, seven on this one. Um, just enough to give the painting more content, but not enough to make it the ocean so busy that it's just cluttered with boats. 
Now I'm using uh, white, like regular white with nothing added to it. Uh, it's still going to dry a little opaque, so it's not going to be as white as you think it is as this dries. But um, I'm dabbing on some more with this flat brush and adding some highlights to the existing waves and touching a few more in a few spots. Uh, one little trick with this is to get that wave to break, you just dab it on there and just gently pull down to get that breaking wave with this flat brush. Uh, I kept talking a little too long and now I'm falling behind, but what I'm doing here is adding some of that pale yellow with the burnt umber and getting that blonde sand glow. Uh, if I just use white, uh, it would be tan, but it, it really wouldn't have the, the right color that we're looking for in this sand. So that's what I'm mixing up. So I'm still a little bit behind uh, with my voice over here, but uh, I added some white after that just to the areas that are going to be catching more light. And then I'm going to add some brown with just a touch of that uh, navy blue uh, to give some of the darker areas some shadow. And I'm finally caught back up. So I've added uh, some of the brown and the white together without much of the yellow this time to give it that uh, lighter tan color. This is to get the areas brighter that are catching the most sunlight. I'm just going to fill those in now. And it's time to touch up the waterline. Uh, just a little bit of brown and some blue to give it that dark shadowy color. And then some white highlights to create some waves. Have I mentioned that this small flat brush works great for that? I, I really like this brush, but it does work very well for waves, so uh, I wouldn't set this one aside when you're working on water. So now I picked up my small filbert brush and I'm back to just filling in some of the shadows and maybe some of the highlights. Uh, I'm keeping the paint wet and blending some of these shadows so I don't have sharp lines and just dabbing in some uh, small detail, maybe uh, debris that's on the ground, uh, just giving the impression that there's something more there than just a flat surface. Uh, if somebody walked down this path, they're going to create shadows and light spots, so I've kind of tapped in some of those and finished a few of the highlights on the bright spots. And now we've jumped ahead just a little bit in the video. I'm going to say that was to conserve time to the length of the video, but the reality is I just plain forgot to hit record. So to see that grass painted, well, you won't see it. But I will paint some grass along the fence line at about the 16 minute and 20 second mark. So if you want to jump ahead and see that and come back, uh, you could. Uh, but I'm just going to keep moving forward with this now and pretend that uh, I never messed that up. I went ahead and mixed up the fence post color. Uh, it's some more of that uh, blue and some of the burnt umber, but it's a little darker than I want, so I'm going to add a little bit of white just to change the value of that. And again, I'm using that small flat brush that I love so much. Uh, it works great for these fence posts. Um, you don't have to be perfect with these. Um, the only thing you're really trying to accomplish here is they're smaller and closer together, further away. And as they come toward you, they're going to get taller, thicker, and slightly spaced further apart. But if one's crooked or got a lump in it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, maybe the guy in selling them that day was drinking a little bit and it was crooked. Maybe the wind blew it over some or it's weathered. So uh, there's a lot of forgiveness when you put these in. So don't worry if they don't seem quite right. Uh, again, we've got to keep in mind that on this particular painting, uh, we're creating the light source from the left. You could have it come from wherever you want, but uh, just sticking with that theme uh, for the content of this, uh, you want to make sure you highlight the left-hand side of the post and probably the top to a certain degree. Um, I went with a little bit of a, a greenish gray color uh, and then just dabbed in some white on the very edge of that and then went ahead and went with a darker color, which again is that blue and umber mixed together to create the shadow side of the post. Then I took that same color and I added some white and quite a bit of water. I want this to be uh, runny, not, not drippy, but runnier. Uh, otherwise that fence wire is going to be way too thick. Um, then you just draw some lines in between the posts. Again, they don't have to be perfect. Uh, it can be kind of crooked. It, it adds to the effect of the painting. Um, after that, 
uh, he took a little bit of white uh, and added some water and just gave some highlights to the top of the fence wire. And again, I, I didn't clean my brush. I left it kind of dirty when I mixed that white because I don't want uh, a bright, bright white. Uh, now I'm back to my favorite brush, that flat brush again. I mixed some more of that blonde sandy color up. And I just wanted to add um, some shadows and uh, highlights to the sand to create uh, maybe wind that had blown it or footsteps that had gone through it. Uh, it's just subtle. You're just giving the impression of this. Um, then I took some of the brown and added some of the darker areas and now I'm back on that filbert brush. Um, as a rule, I usually paint from the back of the painting uh, toward the foreground and I kind of screwed up the order a little bit here. I should have maybe built this uh, shadowy effect around the grass line earlier. It makes it a little more difficult. You could screw up your post, but uh, you can get in there and, and do this after the fact. There's no like preset way to do this. It just would have been easier if I followed that uh, background to foreground order. And now you finally get to see me paint the grass. Uh, so I'm using a beat up old fan brush. Uh, this fan brush is actually a natural bristle brush, not synthetic. Uh, so the hairs on it are a bit stiffer. Uh, it works well for painting this grass. Uh, and I'm just blocking in the background grass. This isn't, this is all gonna get covered, but I'm starting with a darker grayish green color, and then I'm gonna lighten it up and go over it. Uh, you don't want to cover up everything you just did. You just want to add uh, a little bit so you still see that dark and light contrast. Now I'm back to my rigor brush and I'm doing uh, a medium tone of green. And the key here is you're going to add, I'm, you can't see it, but I'm dipping my brush in water and I'm adding quite a bit of water to this. Otherwise the paint's just too thick and you won't be able to get this uh, fine grassy texture. I'm curling the brush as I go to uh, give the effect of grasses and all just straight blades sticking straight up in the air. Um, and then uh, I'm going to keep working forward through this. As I do this medium green, I'm going to change it up and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to this and go over it and uh, just build the depth as I go and go lighter and lighter. Uh, there's some pale yellow and uh, here I'm going to go ahead and uh, and just keep working forward with this. Yeah, As I work through the shades of uh, lighter and lighter yellow, um, I just got to keep reminding you that the importance is, is really to add a lot of water to this. There's no way to make this happen without this paint being quite wet. Uh, I wasn't happy with the depth so I did add a little bit of uh, darker blades in the background. Uh, and now I'm working forward into that um, just straight yellow. Uh, I haven't changed this color at all. It's just straight yellow with quite a bit of water. Uh, it's It looks funny right now, but as it dries, as you can see in the background, it, it kind of changes shade a little bit. Uh, it always gets a little bit lighter uh, when it dries. I'm going to finish this grass up by adding some white to that yellow to get the lightest blades of grass that maybe are catching a little bit more of the light. And we finally stacked enough different color on there to give that grass some depth and look at least a little bit realistic. And now I'll add some more shadow effect again with that brown and navy blue color to create a, a grayish shadowy color. Um, I'm just dabbing in around areas in the grass that are going to be uh, shaded from the sunlight uh, to create that shadow effect. Now I'm going to use that same color to create the fence post shadows. Uh, I should be grabbing my favorite little brush, that flat brush, but I had the filbert brush in my hand so I went ahead and went with it. Uh, I'm just drawing straight lines uh, across from the light source. Uh, they should get consecutively longer as they come to you to keep that perspective in check. 
Now to do the other fence post. Uh, that's a little bit lighter sand on that side, so the shadow is going to be slightly uh, brighter shades. So I'm adding just a little bit of white to create the fence post on that right hand side. Now at this point is where I notice the fence posts on the left hand side are not quite lined up with the fence posts on the right hand side. And they'll be the easier ones to correct. So um, again, that's the great thing about acrylic is you can kind of erase everything you did. So I mixed up some of that blondish uh, sand color and went ahead and started going over it. Uh, I just kind of mixed up some lighter and darker shades of it to cover everything up and voila. I erased my fence post shadows. So now I'm back into my shadow color and trying to take some time to get it just right. It was a little dark to start with and a little too green. Uh, added some brown and a little bit more of the white uh, to get it lighter and added some water which you also couldn't see. Um, I want this to be uh, slightly opaque so when it dries you can still see uh, the sand underneath to a certain degree. So I went ahead and got that done, touched up a couple of the areas that looked incorrect, and poof, we basically have a finished painting. And then last but not least, make sure to put your name on it so everybody knows how awesome you are. And there it is. Thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.